Howdy. So, it's been several weeks um, since my last video update to YouTube. Um, and a little housekeeping for my regular subscribers. Um, I haven't been out of the cabin too much. We've had some sickness in our extended family a member in the hospital, and we've had to uh, curtail going down to the cabin a little bit. Um, when I get back from this current trip I'm on, um, I should be going back down. We're getting ready to put the ceiling on the guest cabin. We have the boards routed and set to go. So we'll be back to some cabin videos pretty soon. Um, I have the wheel horse running well. Uh, all my tractors are going good. Um, chainsaw is going good. So maybe I'll do some milling sometime towards the end of summer. Um, really, it's probably more next year because I want to take those trees down um, in the winter time that I'm going to turn into boards. But uh, I'd like to try it out a little bit. But uh, in my comments, I've had a couple of people ask about how I'm doing my time lapses. And uh, at this conference, um, I managed to get an amazing view. And you might recognize where I am. Let's see if I can turn the camera a little bit. Uh, I'm in Las Vegas um, for a week for a conference, and then my, tape, my family's arriving tomorrow, and the day after we're going to the Grand Canyon. Um, but with this amazing view, um, I decided to go ahead and uh, do some time lapses. Um, that's uh, the Spring Mountains, I believe they're called, in the distance. And I got some pretty cool um, day to night stuff, which is new for me. Um, and I'll go over what I use to do those. Um, I will do a future video, and I've promised going into detail on, on my time-lapse rail system on how I use that. I just haven't had time with everything going on. So, uh, you know, to do, let me step back a little bit, and I'm going to move this camera inside the room soon, but I wanted to show you my setup in the hotel room. Um, yeah, I'm shooting through glass, which isn't preferable, but it works. Um, I got a little bit of glare every once in a while in my time lapses. Um, the equipment needed um, is a camera with, that takes an external shutter or one that has a built-in intervalometer. Um, my camera does not, so I have an external intervalometer, which is this device right here. It's also a remote trigger. Um, a tripod or some way to keep it steady, because you're going to have it in place for several hours. Um, yeah, I'm using my Sony a77 with an external battery pack, or you know, the battery grip right here. So there's two batteries built in. Um, yeah, and that's my setup. Um, I use a polarizing filter um, on some of my shots to enhance the sky, um, and I take it off as the sun comes down to sunset. Um, that's proven to be somewhat problematic because um, there's a bit of a jump in my in my uh, in the lightness when you do that, and I'm trying to correct it in software. But uh, I'm still learning, um, and people ask what I'm doing, so. Yeah, this is different than the cabin ones, um, and I haven't done either my first day to night transition videos. So hopefully I'll get better at it. But uh, I'm going to link to a separate video that includes just the time lapses. Um, and the other option I have for time lapse is I'm using my GoPro right now to record this, and the GoPro has a built in intervalometer. Um, and I used it on my flight uh, from uh, Buffalo to here. Um, hooked up to the window using a suction cup mount um, and I'm going to try a time lapse tonight on the window here with the GoPro and see how that comes out. Um, the GoPro is a very wide angle of view so we'll see what I get um, and I will do a separate um, video of the of the from Buffalo to here flight um, and uh, I'll probably take the one I do tonight of this and include it on the video I'll upload um, either late tonight or, or sometime tomorrow. So I'm going to remove this camera into the room because it's so bright next to the glass you'll never see the settings I'm playing with. So let me move it in. Okay, I have the camera away from the window so hopefully I can get a better exposure on the camera itself. It's too bright next to the window. Um, the camera, um, I'm using a lens that goes fairly wide 16 millimeter um, 2.8 lens um, and I have the shade on it when I put it against the glass so that it can block some of the sun from creating um, shadows and effects. Uh, I do get some on the glass sometimes and I clean the inside of the window against when I push it. Um, inside of a hotel room like this um, you push it right up against the glass and turn all the lights off inside the hotel room. 
otherwise you'll get reflections. Um, on one of my videos I have a bit of this painting in the background in the shot because I had my laptop turned on and it was lighting it up and reflecting into the glass. Um, the camera settings, I've, I've experimented with two for doing time lapses. At the cabin, I leave it on full manual mode um, because those shots are fairly consistent. Um, yeah, you want the camera on full manual mode, you want the ISO set to 100 or whatever your native is for your camera, some of them are 200. Um, on this camera, it's 100. So I set the camera to 100 ISO and, and the display goes dark on me here, but It goes to 100 ISO, I set the camera there. Um, I shoot everything in RAW, my camera supports RAW, um, so I don't have to worry about white balance because I can fix that afterwards. Um, they, I can do it in, in Lightroom. Um, other settings, um, you want to keep the lens at 2.8 um, or whatever your fastest f-stop is. If you use a, a larger f-stop, even though your camera, you know, if you use 5.6 and you have a 2.8 lens, each time it's going to adjust the settings a bit, it won't be exactly 5.6. It'll be like 5. Point, you know, 5, 9 one time and 5.61 the next time. Um, setting it to 2.8, leaving it wide open, keeps it fairly constant. Uh, I don't have a card in right here right now, which is why it's reading no card, and one of the batteries is empty, but I have two batteries in this pack. Um, for doing um, I've been doing these pretty much unattended. I did one of them where I was in the room for the entire session. For the unattended ones, I'm using aperture priority and letting the camera pick the aperture. Now that has a couple side effects. It flutters a bit. So one shot might be, you know, one two hundredth of a second, and the next shot is one one sixtieth, and then it goes back and forth a couple times. And you can fix that in software, but it's not perfect. Um, if you if you have the time to set it in full manual mode and monitor the exposure using the LCD, after you take a picture, yeah, um, as a four second shot, I should have changed it. This was after last night, and it's going to be way overexposed. But I get a histogram right here. I can adjust the picture as I go along, and I did that on the one I did last night. Um, yeah, it, but aperture mode works. Yeah, I'm in Vegas. I don't want to spend all my time in my hotel room. So um, you have to kind of guess what your longest shutter is going to be. Um, yeah, I, I guess between four to eight seconds um, at night. So I set um, my settings to allow for that amount of time. Um, and what I mean by that is the intervalometer is where I set all my shots up. This is a very cheap one, comes off eBay, and uh, um, it has basically four or five settings. Delay is how long after the first shot, or after I turn it on, it goes. This is set for five seconds. Um, this is for how long I'm going to let the shot take. It says 15 seconds, but because I'm using my camera for controlling the shutter, um, that just means I have up to 15 seconds to complete my shot. So if it takes, you know, one second, then it's going to be sitting for 14 seconds doing nothing, which is fine. Um, that works. Um, this is how long the interval is shot time in between shots. Um, N is the number of shots, and I have it set for infinity, so it'll keep on running until I turn it off. Um, and the last one is just sound, because I don't want to hear it beep every time it goes off. So once I have everything set the way I want, I just hit start. And if I'm using aperture priority mode on my camera, I am able to leave and come back in several hours and hopefully I have something. This is a lot like um, working in the film days where you took a shot and you had to wait for it to get developed to see what you got. Here, I, I do a, a three hour photo session and wait to see what I got when I'm done. Um, yeah, you, you, don't, you never know if it's going to be interesting, if the sky is going to go red or not. Um, if the clouds are going to work with you or not, so it's you know, a lot of luck involved. Um, so for, for this location here, I know that during the bright day sunlight here, set to um, ISO 100, um, I was, I'd need a shutter with my polarizer on there about 1 250th of a second to start. Um, 
because I've done three nights of these, I know that towards the end of it, I'm using about a four second um, exposure at ISO 100. And um, yeah, there's certain steps along the way between those two numbers. Uh, they take longer and longer. Um, yeah, as it, as the sun goes down, it will. Um, yeah, it, it, it and it, it happens really quickly. It'll, it'll sit like at one two fifty of a second for a really long time, and then as it goes to one you know sixtieth of a second and one thirtieth and one you know fifteenth, those changes happen really quickly. Um, so I have to if I'm doing it manually, adjusting the settings myself, I have to pay attention. Um, it. it that you know that day to night where the sun's hitting the horizon um yeah you know, I, I make a lot of changes that are only a couple minutes apart and when you turn it into video because it takes 24 pictures for one second those changes happen you know in a second um a second of video so yeah i, I haven't done a, a video like this before showing you how i do recordings um you know, and I had people ask me how I'm doing them. This is why I'm showing this demo. Um, and like I said, I'm going to include some footage. And I'm gonna, the first three ones will be of this camera here running. And like I said, I'm going to set this GoPro up to do one tonight. And the last video will be uh, a GoPro doing a day to night. Um, and we'll see how that turns out. Um, it, it might not turn what well, I'm not sure how it's going to look at all. But I'll include it and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, um, like I said, I'm going to do a separate one just using the GoPro, and it has a built-in intervalometer. It makes it very easy for doing time lapses, and I will show the uh, the flight, and some people might find that interesting. I, I, I posted it up to Facebook already and um, for my family and friends to look at it, and everyone thought it was really neat. Um, and I met somebody at my class reunion recently who's going to take me up in a Cessna um, and do a flyover of the cabin. So look forward to that sometime this summer. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's been about 20 years since I've been in a small plane, um, and I'm going to bring the GoPro and the big camera um, and hopefully get some shots that I've never, ever had um, from the air. Um, and I'll do a time lapse of that and probably video. Um, and I'm not sure how low we can actually go. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, going to my reunion was really, really cool. <laughs> Um, it's been 20 years since high school. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in this type of stuff, let me know. I'm only posting this because people asked about it. Um, if there's other things you see in my videos that you would like me to to demo or to show, um, I'm always looking for ideas. Uh, I, I have over 130 or 50 videos, I'm not even sure. And you know, coming up with new and interesting content can be challenging. So, you know, give me some ideas when you see something that's interesting. Uh, let me know if you like this. Click the uh, the like button on the on the uh, on the video. Put a comment in the uh, comment section. Um, I said I'm gonna make the the time lapse itself a separate video because you know, people might be looking for that as a separate thing. This is gonna be more of a tutorial, and it's a very basic tutorial. I can do a more detailed one maybe towards the end of summer as I get more experience with it all. But uh, yeah, luck happened this this time. I've been to Vegas a number of times for work, and uh, some years you get a great view. Some years I get a view of a nearby hotel only. This is an awesome view, so I couldn't let it go to waste. So, yeah, um, and uh, a couple of weeks I should get some cabin videos back up and going, and uh, I'll be back at the cabin in two weeks. Um, so hopefully, uh, I'll have something interesting. Um, more, or more than likely in the guest cabin. So, until next time, thanks for watching.